Tamron 2470 f2.8 VC USD G2. The Holy Trinity of lenses reaches from 16 mm all the way up to 200 mm. The 24 to 70 is in the middle of this focal distance. And in this video, we're going to talk about my first impressions of this Tamron 24 to 70 f2.8. Coming up. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Roger and on this channel we talk about cameras, tech gear and videography and more and more about photography also. So if this is something that you're interested in, please consider hitting that subscribe button and click that like button if you like this video. So in my last video I did the unboxing of this Tamron lens. Tamron's 24 to 70 has been on the market for some years now. This specific lens that I have is the G2 lens. This is the second generation of the 24 to 70 from Tamron. The G2 came out in 2017, so it's not the newest lens on the market either. Tamron has made this 24 to 70 for a lot of cameras Canon, Sony, Nikon, and so on. So no matter what camera you have, I bet you can find this lens for your camera. If not, there is adapters out there. I'm using the Tamron for Canon as I have the Canon EOS R and my Canon M6 Mark II. I do have to use an adapter to make it fit onto my EOS R as my EOS R have an RF mount and the Canon version of the Tamron 24 to 70 it's made with an EF mount. That also applies for my Canon M6 Mark II. I have to use an adapter for that camera also because my Canon M6 Mark II has an EFM mount. And as I said, this is an EF mount. I do bet that when Tamron makes a generation three out of this lens, I think that will come in the new RF mount for Canon specifically. So you don't have to use this EF to R adapter. This lens has a long name. VC stands for vibration compensation. That means short terms, this lens has image stabilization inside.
USD stands for ultrasonic drive and that has to do with the autofocus and USD ultrasonic drive makes this a quiet autofocus so when it comes to video the camera might pick up some noise when the camera shifts focus but it's pretty quiet Tamron's version of the 24-70, it's the budget version of the original 24-70 from Canon. Canon has had several generations of the 24-70 f2.8 and the newest one is the Canon RF 24-70. Now when I say budget, that's because the Tamron 24-70, at least the EF version, it's one third of the price of the RF lens. This lens also has an 82 millimeter filter thread and that means that you need big filters. So just buy a big filter and then step up rings and you can use that filter on all your other lenses also. I did get a question the other day on what kind of filters that I use and I use KNF Concepts filters because I think they are in the middle range when it comes to price and I still think they do give a good result when it comes to the quality of the pictures and video that you take. Now I am not going to do a really detailed and technical review of this lens. For that you can just watch Jared Polin or Christopher Frost video and I bet Gerald London has probably picked this lens apart and looked at every aspect of this lens. As I said it is a three-year-old lens so there are a lot of videos out there. But for me when I was going to buy this lens I was always looking for the newest videos and newest reviews of this lens and that's the reason I'm making this video. I hope someone out there looking to buy a 24-70 get something out of this video as this is a 2020 or the end of 2020 review or first impressions video on this lens. I was planning on including the Canon M6 Mark II in this video but I haven't had the time to test this lens both with my EOS R and my Canon M6 Mark IIs but I think I will make a video about the Tamron 24-70 with my Canon M6 Mark II later on. And if you wanna watch that video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. So what are my first impressions of this lens? Well, first of all, it is a heavy lens. It weighs almost one kilo and with my Canon EOS R, it is a heavy setup to carry around, but I haven't found it too heavy for my use. And the heaviness of this setup makes it easier to get smooth video when you're hand holding the camera. When it comes to this lens in daylight, I think this lens performs really good. I've mostly taken photos with this lens. I've not used it as much when it comes to video. I did make the montage in the beginning of this video with this lens. The lighting conditions wasn't the best. I had the ISO, I think it was up to 8000 on that video. So it was a quite grainy and noisy video, but nonetheless, got some good shots from this lens. In good lighting conditions, I have no problems with this lens. I think it works great. When I do experience some focusing problems with this lens is during low light situations. And especially when I'm trying to photograph our new dog, because our new dog is all black, and I'm not sure if it's the lens or the camera or the combination of those two together, but it has a problem focusing on that dog. I do bet if I had the Canon EOS R6 or the R5 that has animal autofocus, I think this would have been a lot better. But until I can afford those cameras, I will have to make do with the Canon EOS R. So I did test this lens out for astrophotography the other day, and when I was outside taking photos, or well, I did get some decent photos with this lens, it's not that. But when I used my Tamron lens, I didn't see anything on the back of my LCD screen on the camera. But when I switched over to the RF 35 millimeter, now that is an F 1.8, but I did use it at F 2.8 just to compare. I did see a lot more using the RF lens from Canon. So I think there are advantages using a native Canon lens with a Canon camera instead of a third-party lens. But again, if you're going to buy the 24-70 to 
are F lens, that's going to cost you three times as much as the price of this lens. In good lighting, this lens is good. It does give you good bokeh. It does give you sharp images. It does perform nicely for the price that you pay. And this is our new dog, our little Millie. And as you can see, she is all black, so she's not that easy to take photos from. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where was I? Yeah. If you're out there looking for a budget lens and you want something in the Holy Trinity, I think Tamron gives you a good option when it comes to your budget. And the 24 to 70 is a little bit of both worlds. Some telephoto and some wide angle. That's it for this week. I do hope you got something out of this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. That would really help me a lot. And if you want to see more videos from me, there's a subscribe button down there that you can press. And if you do that, click that bell too. So you get a notification when I come out with a new video. So that's it for this week. Maybe I will see you in another video. Bye.